Hello, hello, guys. Welcome. How are you? Hi, teacher. Hello, hello. How are you? Hi, teacher. Fine. Good evening, Thank teacher. You. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Hi. Are you ready? Is everybody ready? Yes, teacher. Okay. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. All right. Who can tell me what activities we were practicing in the previous class? Do you remember? Count and not count. That is correct. We were looking at countables and noun countables. So today we're going to be working from the platform. We're going to be looking at this section right here. We're going to finish uh, section number one. A time to remember. So in the previous class, we were asking and responding questions about your classmates. So today we're going to review the video for the simple past, and then we're gonna continue for the next activity. At this moment, please take notes and listen to the video. Can you hear? Yes, teacher. Yes, okay. teacher. Okay, everybody listen to the video. I'm gonna try to make sense of that question and then we're gonna... Hi everyone, by the end of this class you'll be able to ask and answer yes and no questions and WH questions using the verb to be in the past. For example, you'll be able to ask the following questions. Were you born in this city? When were you born? Where were you born? So we're going to try to make sense of these two questions that you see there on the left. Where were you born? Were you born in Buenos Aires? And the first thing that um, I want to point out is the following, that we're still going to continue to follow that uh, rule that we learned in our previous lesson, which was that we're going to follow the verb to be, either was or where, depending on the pronoun. So if I talk about I, he, she, or it, then the verb to be that we'll use will be was. And whenever we talk about the pronouns, we, you, or they, the verb to be that we're going to use will be where. Now, let's try to make sense of the different types of questions that we have. First of all, we're going to talk about yes or no questions. And that will be the second one that you see there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make sense of that question, and then we're going to practice making a few. So um, let me start by writing down a formula. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to include will be the verb to be, and I'm going to go ahead and color this in, let's say, uh, green. I'm going to go ahead and color this subject in, let's say, red. And the complement, I'm going to go ahead and color that in something um, different. I'm going to go ahead and use, um, I'm going to go ahead and use blue this time, right? Um, and so let's do the following. Uh, let me uh, write down uh, the uh, uh, the verb to be here, and then this is going to follow the subject. And after this, this will follow the complement. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, change the colors there. Okay. All right, there we go. So in order for us to make questions in the past using the verb to be, what we're going to do is we're going to use the verb to be in the past, either was or where. And I mentioned that we need to recall uh, this rule that we learned in our previous lesson in order to understand that. Then this follows the subject. And then this will follow whatever complement that you want to ask. So if you look at our example here, were you born in Buenos Aires? And the answer to this question will be, yes, I was. That will be the short answer. Um, and the negative response will be, no, I wasn't. And of course, this will vary depending on the pronoun. Let's say that I changed the subject now. And let's say that now I want to ask about he. So how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, we need to recall that whenever we use the pronoun he, 
we're going to use the verb to be was. So therefore, we'll say, was he born in China? And of course, we also need to recall that um, here we can um, use names instead of the pronoun. So was Mary born in China? Was Peter born in China, etc. So what I want to do now is I want to talk about creating WH questions. And in order for us to create questions, we're pretty much going to follow the same pattern. So as you can see, Hello, I'm going to Elizabeth, do is I'm just going to copy evening. and paste this previous rule here. And the yes. only difference that we're going to have in creating the I missed you yesterday. What happened, teacher? I'm going to write. I didn't have electricity. I didn't have electricity. And what are those WH words? Well, you can see the example that ah. we have on this little chart. We're going to use WH words such as where, who, what, mm. when, why, etc. That's what we mean by uh, WH words. And so that it's what's going to um, be included at the very beginning. And everything else will pretty much stay the same. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change the color um, this differently just to make sure that we know what's happening there. So let me do that right now. OK, there we go. So we're going to have some sort of WH word. And then that's going to follow the verb to be in the past. Uh, then it's going to follow the subject and then whatever complement that exists. So if we look at our example, where were you born? Right? So there we let me write the same one there. Where the verb to be. Oops. And then this is going to follow the subject. And then uh, whatever complement. And then we have ourselves a WH question. And WH questions simply means information questions, if you will. Also, if you want to look at them that way. What I would like for you to do now is to practice the concept that we just learned. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to post some questions here for you. And I would like for you to answer these questions and come up with as many others that you possibly can. Try to make those yes or no questions or WH questions. Okay, at this moment, does anybody have any questions related to the video? Do you have any questions related to what you saw on the video? Related to no, the just, simple past? No, did you? Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move forward and we're going to do the practice activity, which is going to be section 1.8, knowledge check. Section 1.8, knowledge check. You are going to identify the correct response from the WH questions at the top. I would like for you to work in pairs. You will have about five minutes and then we are going to check together. Okay. Are you ready? We're gonna yes, work, yes, yes, teacher. We're yes, gonna teacher. work in pairs. Yes, in teacher. Pairs. All right. Teacher, 1.8, right? Yes, correct, okay, 1.8. Good night. Hi. Good night. La uno punto ocho dijo, ¿verdad? Eh, iba a preguntar porque me voy conectando, no escuché lo primero. 
vimos un video. Sí, la 1.8 es de la plataforma. Hombre. Hello, hello. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Este, yo acabo de, de entrar, no sé si dieron alguna explicación para, no sé qué, qué trabajo se va a hacer. Vimos el video de la 1.7 de la plataforma y ahorita vamos a contestar el ejercicio. No sé si no lo han visto ustedes, si quieren véanlo ahorita y después lo hacemos. Ah, va. Gracias. Bye. De la 1.7, me dijo. Sí, el video de la 1.7. Ok. Hola, hola, Blanca. Este, después de ver el video, hay que responder lo que está en la, en la siguiente. Eh, sí, yo creo que sí. sí Igual me iba a el... Perdón. Sí, la 1.8. Ah, bueno, o sea, yo, yo, yo ya la tengo. 
Yo igual ya la había terminado. Ah, Yo también. Yeah. Hasta entonces estamos bien. No sé si ya las tienen terminadas las otras para, para que sigamos con las otras. Yo ya, ya igual ya terminé la 100. Yo ahorita. Yo voy por verdad, el 2, el, la sección 2 voy. Ajá, yo estoy en la sección 2. Me he quedado en. Yo en el primer. En el primer. Ah, All right, let's go ahead and check the first one. Uh, Luis Alonso, number one, please. All right, Miguel Angel, number one, please. Yes. Un moment, teacher. La uno, sí, lea la pregunta y su respuesta. Which option is a correct way to answer the questions? Mm -hmm. Were you a were you a good student in high school? Mm -hmm. Yes, I was. Yes, I was. Very good. All right. Let me have uh, Carlos Heriberto, number two, please. Okay, teacher. Um, put these words in the correct order. You born, you born where city in this? Mm. Uh, the last one, were you born in this city? Perfect. Thank you. Reina, number three. For a question to match this, that's where my favorite subject were math and science. 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 Uh, sería la one. What were your favorite subject in school? Perfect. Perfect. Thank you, Reina. Number four, Jenny. Four. Yes. Which is correct. Uh, the, the answer is when was Peter born? When was Peter born? Very good. Thank you. And the last one, Eduardo Romero, number five. Choose the best question to match this response. I was 15 years old. How old were you in uh, 1999? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about this activity? Questions in regards to vocabulary or pronunciation or grammar? Nobody? Okay. We're going to go ahead and look at the following one, which is 1.9. Build English conversational skills with the phrases used to, which you can use to describe your childhood or past. By the end of this class, you will be able to form statements, negatives, and short answers with used to. Learn English phrases like, I used to be very messy when I was a kid, but now I'm very neat. I didn't used to follow politics, but now I read the newspaper every day. An oral English comprehension exercise is included. Let's listen to the conversation. And then we're going to practice. Be able to discuss percent. your childhood habits using Listen, used to. Please. Let me give you a couple of examples. When I was a kid, I used to be very messy, but now I'm very neat. I used to have a lot of hobbies, but now I don't have any free time. 
I didn't used to follow politics, but now I read the newspapers every day. You'll also listen to a short conversation, which illustrates how this topic is used. Let me get started by presenting some structure. As I mentioned, what we're going to do is we're going to try to become familiar with the usage of used to. And in this class, what we're going to do is we're going to become familiar with making positive statements and negative statements using used to. So here are a couple of examples that we want to learn. I used to collect comic books. I didn't used to collect anything, but now I collect art. Um, and I'm just borrowing the examples that are here, but of course I'll give more details about this in just one second. But the first thing that I would like to do at this time is that I would like to have you listen to a conversation and you will learn how this topic is used and after that I'm going to start explaining how to structure these sentences together. So let's do that right now. Let's listen to that conversation that I'm talking about. Thanks for taking the time to speak with me, Jerry. Oh, it's my pleasure. You have a beautiful accent. Where did you grow up? I grew up in England, in a city called Brighton. Were you popular when you were growing up? Not really. I wasn't unpopular, but I wasn't in the popular crowd at school. I had a nice group of friends, though. How did you like school? Oh, I loved school. I was a great student. My mother actually taught at my primary school. I always thought that was terrific. What about your free time as a child? Did you have a hobby? I used to love to draw. Later I learned to paint and I still do that. Actually, I have some paintings in a gallery right now. That's impressive. Well, it's a very small exhibit. But it's something I really enjoy. Did you have a favorite game when you were growing up? I used to play video games a lot as a kid. The video games then were very different from the games now. I didn't have a favorite, though. I liked a lot of them. What about a favorite place? Hmm, my favorite place. I used to go to a summer camp in Ireland. I loved that. I got to go horseback riding almost every day. Do you still go to Ireland? No, not very often. Let me start by explaining this chart. First of all, let me just get the concept out of the way. Used to refers to something that you regularly did in the past, but you don't do that anymore. And let me get started by explaining positive statements. So what I'm going to do at this time, I'm just going to put the formula here and we're going to try to make sense of the positive statements that are outlined there for us. So what we're going to do at this time is we're, we're going to borrow that first example that you see there. So we have I is the subject and then this follows used to and then we're going to have the verb. It's going to be in the present. So I used to and in this case be. Very messy, but uh, now um, very neat. There we go. So the subject in our sentence is I. I'm going to go ahead and play with the colors right now. Uh, this follows used to. And then we have the verb to be. Now, this just happens to be the verb that we're using in this example, but it's not always going to be the verb to be. And then finally, we're going to have some sort of complement that um, uh, in order to finish that idea there. And so now let's try to make a couple of more examples. So I'm going to mention some of my own so I used to and I'm gonna say I used to play a lot of sports when I was a kid um, and well we follow the structure um, we have a subject then this follows used to then we have the verb in the present tense and then we have some sort of complement at the end Now let me present the negative structure. Let me present how we're going to make negative statements. So previously we learned that we can make positive statements with used to. Now we're going to talk about negative statements. The only thing that's going to change to our previous structure is that we're going to include didn't. 
All right, so that's what I want you to notice. And also, I want you to notice that used to will no longer be in the uh, it will no longer be in the past. And now it's going to be in the present, and that's because of this auxiliary verb that you see here. So we're going to have the subject plus didn't, and then used to will be in the present. It's not going to be in the past like we saw it in our positive statements. And the rest will pretty much stay the same. Uh, so the subject plus didn't use to plus the verb in the present and then whatever complement exists. So in this case, um, we're gonna I'm going to go ahead and write uh, a couple of examples here. So some of the ones that I mentioned as we began the class. Let me go ahead and give another example here. I'm going to say I didn't use to collect anything, but I do now. There we go. And there is one last way on how to express negative statements, and that is using never used to. And it's quite similar. So let me give you an example about this. I never used to play sports, okay, but now I play every day. So we can also make a negative statements using never used to. Okay, so the subject plus never used to. And that's going to follow the verb in its present form. And then whatever complement exists. I never used to play sports. I never used to worry about money. I never used to play sports. But now I play tennis, just like you see on the example there. And the last thing that I would like for you to do is to tell me what did you used to do when you were a child? Did you used to play sports? Did you used to have a pet that you used to play video games and also mention the things that you didn't used to do when you were a child so for example I never used to collect anything all right uh, do you guys have any questions or do you want me to repeat the video Teacher, I have a question. Yes. Please, can you put the, the example, the, the last example, please? Let me see. This one? And the last thing that I want um, to yes. do is to yes, tell yes. Um, you. Yes. I have a question. It, uh, we always, we use to these sentences is mm -hmm. large mm -hmm. uh, because all... Uh, my question is this, is this sentence is always mm -hmm. have a two part? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we put, but now I play every day. Mm -hmm. Always yes. put, but now on the complement is a large sentence, mm -hmm. always? Mm -hmm. uh, well, it depends. It depends. If you want to say only the the negative or the positive, you can stop it right there. You know, you can say, for example, I never used to play video games. And that's it, right? If you want to say a, a short sentence, I never used to play sports. Okay, we can stop this sentence or finish the sentence. Correct. The short sentence. Here. Correct. Yes, okay. because here you. you're talking about the past. I never used to play sports, right? I'm, I am expressing an action in the past. Then after you say, but now I play every day. So here you made a, a transition to simple present. So you went from simple past to simple present. Okay, teacher, thank you. Uh huh. Or you can say something like, for example, um, I, I never 
used to, uh, for example, play soccer. I never used to play soccer. And you can stop the sentence there. But if you want to express the present, you can say, but now I play every weekend. So it depends what you want to say, right? If you want to say only, I never used to play soccer, okay, that's fine. But if you want to express the difference from before and now, you can say, but now I play every weekend. Mm -hmm. So it depends. It depends what you want to say. Si solo quiere hablar del pasado, solo va a decir, I never used to play soccer. Pero si quiere comparar el pasado con el presente, va a decir, but now I play every weekend. So it, it depends what you want to say. Teacher. Yes. Siempre que sea en negativo, vamos a usar el verbo en su forma normal. Correct. Dice que el verbo debe ser en presente, en forma original. No, el verbo siempre se va a quedar en su base form. Ajá, eso. Cuando usamos, Ajá, cuando usamos, el, cuando usamos el used to. No. Only when we do. Yes, when okay. you use used to, the okay. verb the verb is going to be in the simple form. Yes. Good question. Another question? Okay. Yes. Another question? Eh, ¿Quieren que repita el video or do you think you understand? I would like to repeat. Repeat one more time? Okay. Please. Yes. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to discuss your childhood habits using used to. Let me give you a couple of examples. When I was a kid, I used to be very messy, but now I'm very neat. I used to have a lot of hobbies, but now I don't have any free time. I didn't used to follow politics, but now I read the newspapers every day. You'll also listen to a short conversation which illustrates how this topic is used. Let me get started by presenting some structure. As I mentioned, what we're going to do is we're going to try to become familiar with the usage of used to. And in this class, what we're going to do is we're going to become familiar with making positive statements and negative statements using used to. So here are a couple of examples that we want to learn. I used to collect comic books. I didn't used to collect anything, but now I collect art. Um, and I'm just borrowing the examples that are here, but of course I'll give more details about this in just one second. But the first thing that I would like to do at this time is that I would like to have you listen to a conversation and you will learn how this topic is used. And after that, I'm going to start explaining how to structure these sentences together. So let's do that right now. Let's listen to that conversation that I'm talking about. Thanks for taking the time to speak with me, Jerry. Oh, it's my pleasure. You have a beautiful accent. Where did you grow up? I grew up in England, in a city called Brighton. Were you popular when you were growing up? Not really. I wasn't unpopular, but I wasn't in the popular crowd at school. I had a nice group of friends, though. How did you like school? Oh, I loved school. I was a great student. My mother actually taught at my primary school. I always thought that was terrific. What about your free time as a child? Did you have a hobby? I used to love to draw. Later I learned to paint, and I still do that. Actually, I have some paintings in a gallery right now. That's impressive. Well, it's a very small exhibit. But it's something I really enjoy. Did you have a favorite game when you were growing up? I used to play video games a lot as a kid. The video games then were very different from the games now. I didn't have a favorite, though. I liked a lot of them. 
What about a favorite place? Hmm, my favorite place. I used to go to a summer camp in Ireland. I loved that. I got to go horseback riding almost every day. Do you still go to Ireland? No, not very often. Let me start by explaining this chart. First of all, let me just get the concept out of the way. You still refers to something that you regularly did in the past, but you don't do that anymore. And let me get started by explaining positive statements. So what I'm going to do at this time, I'm just going to put the formula here and we're going to try to make sense of the positive statements that are outlined there for us. So what we're going to do at this time is we're, we're going to borrow that first example that you see there. So we have I is the subject and then this follows used to and then we're going to have the verb. It's going to be in the present. So I used to and in this case be. Very messy, but uh, now um, very neat. There we go. So the subject in our sentence is I. I'm going to go ahead and play with the colors right now. Uh, this follows used to. And then we have the verb to be. Now, this just happens to be the verb that we're using in this example, but it's not always going to be the verb to be. And then finally, we're going to have some sort of complement that um, uh, in order to finish that idea there. And so now let's try to make a couple of more examples. So I'm going to mention some of my own. So I used to, and I'm going to say I used to play a lot of sports when I was a kid. Um, and well, we follow the structure. Um, we have a subject. Then this follows used to. Then we have the verb in the present tense. And then we have some sort of complement at the end. Now let me present the negative structure. Let me present how we're going to make negative statements. So previously we learned that we can make positive statements with used to. Now we're going to talk about negative statements. The only thing that's going to change to our previous structure is that we're going to include didn't. All right, so that's what I want you to notice. And also I want you to notice that used to will no longer be in the uh, it will no longer be in the past and now it's going to be in the present and that's because of this auxiliary verb that you see here. So we're going to have the subject plus didn't and then used to will be in the present. It's not going to be in the past like we saw it in our positive statements. And the rest will pretty much stay the same. Uh, so the subject plus didn't used to plus the verb in the present and then whatever complement exists. So in this case, um, we're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and write uh, a couple of examples here. So some of the ones that I mentioned as we began the class. Let me go ahead and give another example here. I'm going to say I didn't use to collect anything. But I do now. There we go. And there is one last way on how to express negative statements, and that is using never used to. And it's quite similar. So let me give you an example about this. I never used to play sports. But now I play every day. So we can also make negative statements using never used to. Okay, so the subject plus never used to, and that's going to follow the verb in its present form. And then whatever complement exists. I never used to play sports. I never used to worry about money. I never used to play sports, but now I play tennis, just like you see on the example there. And the last thing that I would like for you to do is to tell me what did you used to do when you were a child? Did you used to play sports? Did you used to have 
a pad that you used to play video games and also mention the things that you didn't used to do when you were a child so for example I never used to collect anything okay let's look at the practice for the practice, we're going to be looking at exercise 111. Uh, I have habilitated the, so that everybody can share the screen and you will go over this activity. You will have five minutes to do it in pairs. One student can share the screen. Ready, let's go. Ready. Hello. Hello, hello. I'm going to put you in pairs. Give me one second. Give me just one minute. Okay, you can go. What is you are with? Jenny. Hello. Jerry. Have a hobby. Jerry used to paint and still paints today. Jerry used to collect Spain. Jerry used to go surfing. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, in, uh, Sur surfing. Okay. Number three. Choice. Right. Choice. The best response for this question. What? What came? What game do you use to play when you were a, ca a kid? Kid. Um, I used to play basketball and football when I was a kid. I used to play basketball and football when I was a kid. I used to play basketball and football when I was a kid. I used to used to is for me is a number three the, the, three the answer is number three okay. because is i used to no no i use no, i use ah but it's present yes I the, the other this is the past Okay, number four, choice the best, respond to this question. What do you do? What do you use to collect, collect when you were a kid? I am a com I used to college comic books. I used to college comic book when I was a kid. I used to I used. Ah, el, pero fíjate que la tercera, mire, también está empatado. Es tu, es tu paz. No sé, usted dígame. For me, is the Ajá, first. Ajá, está empatado. Because it's the past, is this. Pero la palabra, mire, colete. Is this, is this the bird in the present. Colete is the bird in the present. And I use. Ah. 
is the past. In this case, use in the past and the colleague in the past. It's not Colleague. correct. Okay. Uh, me too. Don't worry, me too. My, my, my last number five. Mm -hmm. But my last job was easy and relaxing. I I was yeah, no, I do I do to work from eight AM to four PM on the Friday. And half we can have. I used to La primera. In this case, I am confused because um, I, no, it, we try. Veamos. Um, uh, number three. We have a number three. She went up. Esta podemos number three. Es, I don't remember this. The pain is still I can pain. Probemos. We prove. Okay. Uh, Choi, the best respond. What the game did you play? When I kid, I used to play. And the second. Yes. Is all all is correct? Can you see? Yes. Yes. That's correct. Okay. Twenty that, and all. That is all. How many time we have? Mm, two minutes. I, the teacher told told us at two minutes, five minutes. I don't remember. Okay. We have four. four. No, pasamos al, al, al uno por todos. Este es once, ¿verdad? Sí. One for One for eleven. ¿Y avanzó en la plataforma usted, Nadia? No. Ah, pues ya la tenía. No. ¿No llegamos hasta el 1.8? No, mañana. Mañana voy a hacer todo eso. No he tenido tiempo. Mañana vamos a tener como la pequeña, la mini balacé, no sé. No sé si le llegó un WhatsApp donde decía eso. Había mandado señorita Paola, parece. Para mañana. Ajá, que iba a hacer una evaluación. Uh, bueno. No sé si le cayó un WhatsApp. Sí. Voy a revisar. Que decía que la primera semana decía. Después decía la segunda semana, la tercera semana, como si vale a un mes. Dice. Avance mínimo esperado. Ajá. Eh, mañana a las nueve, hasta las nueve de la mañana. La sección uno. Ah, de la mañana es. Sí. Sí, para ser un era de la noche. No, de la mañana. <risa> ah, pues yo me voy a poner a hacer. La, la sí, semana la dos y tres, de miren el sam de tres, la semana tres y cuatro, la, sec, la semana tres, la sección cuatro, semana four. Sección 5 y examen final. Mencionarles que se está hablando de la plataforma. Is everybody finished? Yes, teacher. All right. Let me have uh, Angel number one read the question and the response. Where did Jerry grow up? Grow up. Where did Jerry grow up? What is your answer? The last one. She grew up 
in Brighton, England. She grew up in Brighton, England. Very good. The last one. Reina, number two, please. Did Jerry have a hobby? Uh, sería number one. Jerry used it to find and she still paints today. Perfect. Here, repeat, used to. Used to. Used to. Mm -hmm. All right, Carlos. Number three, Carlos. Hi. Hi. Me. Chose the best response for the question. What games did you use to play when you were a kid? Serial mm, number number two. I used to play basketball and football when I was a kid. Excellent. Correct. I used to Thank play you. basketball and football when I was a kid. Thank you. Let me have number four, Miguel Angel. Present teacher. Yes, number four, Choose please. the best response to this question. What did you use to call it when you were a kid? Okay. Um, Angus, answer. I, I just said to call it comic books when I was a kid. Excellent. Did did anybody used to collect comic books when you were a kid? Wait. Oui. You? It's no. useless. Used to. Used to. Uh -huh. Used to. When I was when I was a kid, I used to collect X Men comic books. Do you oh, know okay. X Men comic books? Yes, I know. Yes. Yeah, I used to collect X Men comic books. Uh, I used to collect cards, uh, little cards, X Men comic cards. I used to have the action figures. <laughs> I was very a big fan of this Peter, Marvel. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. What does this mean used to? Used, used to, to is like when you say yo solía. Okay. Yo solía coleccionar um, comic solía. books. Uh -huh. Something that you oh, would okay. do it all the time. Okay, the last okay. one. Thanks. Yes. The last one for me, please, Nadia. Um, I read all. Uh, my last job was easy and relaxing. I used to work, work from 9 a.m. 4 p.m. Monday, Friday, and have a weekend off. Excellent. Correct. Oh, what happened here? Oh, this one. Yeah. Is, is the first one? It's number, the number it's, one. It's the first one. Okay. okay. It's number one. Okay. Yeah, I used to collect comic books when I was a kid. Okay. All right, there you go. Okay, any questions in regards to this activity or the usage of the grammar? Over here. Nobody? Okay. Let's look at section 1.12. We're looking at section 1.12, build English conversational skills with the phrase used to. Used to, which you can use to describe your childhood or past. By the end of this class, you will be able to form questions, statements, negatives, and short answers with used to. Learn English phrases like, what sports did you used to play when you were a kid? Did you used to collect things when you were a child? And what did you used to do for fun when you were a kid? Let's listen to the video and take notes, please.
Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to make questions using used to. We'll practice making yes and no questions and WH questions. For example, you'll be able to make questions such as, what sports did you used to play when you were a child? Did you used to collect anything when you were a child? What kind of things did you used to do for fun when you were a kid? As I mentioned previously, what we're going to do in this class is we're going to learn how to form questions okay, well, using used to. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on creating yes and no questions as the one that I'm circling there. Did you use to collect things? That's a yes and no question. And then the way to answer that, yes, I used to collect comic books or no, I didn't use to collect anything. And also we're going to learn how to create those WH questions with used to. Let me start by presenting the structure. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to make sense of the two questions that are here. As you can see, the first question is a yes or no question. And the second question, what sports did you use to play? That's an information question. That means that we have a WH word. So let's try to make sense of the first one first. Um, the um, yes or no questions don't have a WH word and therefore start with did. So did you use to, and it follows the verb in the present, collect things. Did is the auxiliary that we're going to use, and then that follows the subject. In this case, it happens to be you. That is going to follow used to. If you notice, used to is not in the past. It's in the present. And then it's going to follow the verb in, in its present tense. And then finally, we'll have some sort of complement. And how do we answer this type of questions? Well, we can either have a positive response such as, yes, I used to collect comic books. Or no, I didn't use to collect anything, but now I collect art. So let me try to give a couple of more examples. And we're going to continue to use that same structure. Um, we want to focus on doing yes and no questions at this moment. So let me ask you the following question. Did you used to listen to rock music? Okay. Did you, I'm going to say, did you play sports? in high school. There we go. Now let me talk about creating WH questions. As you can see, that's the one at the bottom. Um, I mentioned that WH questions, we use this kind of questions to ask for information. And we'll borrow the example, we'll borrow that question that you see there. What sport did you use to play? So let me go ahead and write that down. What? sports did you used to play? Sometimes we're going to have a compliment, sometimes we're not. In this case, we don't have a compliment. But uh, what sports? That's the WH word. That follows auxiliary did. And then after that, we're going to have a subject. After that, we're going to have used to. Notice that used to is in the present. And that follows the verb in its present form then sometimes you're going to have a compliment, sometimes you're not. So let me write a couple of more questions here so that you can get the hang of it. What uh, video games did you used to play when you were a kid? Okay, that'll be another one. So what video games, that will be my WH word, it follows the auxiliary did. Subject is you. Used to. And the verb in its present form. And then whatever complement. The last thing that I would like for you to do is to practice making questions. You're going to make yes or no questions and also WH questions. What I'm going to do at this time is I'm going to post 
some answers and what you're going to do is you're going to come up with the best possible question to the answers that are stated here you need to identify whether the answer is from a yes or no question or is it from a, a WH question and um, answer that accordingly. All right, guys, we're going to stop right here. I have to get ready for the next class. So we are going to see you on Monday. Please continue working on the platform and do the activities on the platform. See you Monday, guys. Bye-bye. Good night, teacher. Good night, teacher. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.